Good evening and welcome to Forge Youth Ministry here at Compassion Radford. Uh, my name is Pastor Chris Blackburn. It's great to have you with us tonight. Uh, just want to say right off the bat, as you can tell, this is a pre-recorded message tonight. And the purpose of that is this. Uh, we are actually having a worship service tonight with our kids. And uh, we're going to spend some time tonight training uh, our youth to begin to hear God's voice. And to hear God's voice, we're going to train them to do that through the Word and through their worship. And quite frankly, just learning to tune their ears to what God is speaking to them in that moment. And uh, as we're doing that tonight, I felt it was uh, more relevant to just have us do a, a quick message here tonight for those who watch online. Um, and I'm going to be talking, if you want to grab your Bible real fast, out of the book of John chapter 15. Uh, but other than that, we would just want you to know if you are watching with us live tonight or if you're catching up with us at another time, we're glad you're here. If you have a prayer request, please know that we are going to take time to pray over those today. Uh, and we'll be checking this message periodically. So if, if it's a month from the day I record it, we're going to look at those and we're going to pray over your requests. And we're going to trust God that he is moving benevolently on your behalf. If you need a Bible, and I know I say this often, but if you need a Bible, if you will contact us here and let us know how to get it to you, I will provide a Bible for you so that you can begin to read into God's Word yourself. <clears throat> so with that said, uh, what I wanted to share from my heart tonight is something that I've been talking about on some of our Coffee with Compassion and uh, also recently taught this at an, another church. But if we are going to learn to hear God's voice, we have to learn to be connected to the vine. And the reason I say that is, is in John chapter 15, Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches. And as I get ready to read this scripture to you, one of the things that I think we need to understand is that Jesus also said he was living water. And living water would come through the vine into the branches to produce good fruit. And so it's important for us to not just see this as an analogy or just a way of just getting people's attentions, but it truly is the heart of God for us to be connected to his son, Jesus Christ. Not just in title as a Christian, or not just based on a denomination where one maybe thinks we're better than the other, but in fact, following the heart of God and having a relationship with Jesus, being connected to the vine. In John chapter 15, starting with verse 5, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the vine, you, that's me and you, the branches. Those who live in me while I live in them will produce a lot of fruit. Now, a lot of people always get confused. Well, what does that mean, fruit? Am I going to become a banana? Or am I going to become a strawberry? Now, obviously, that is not what Jesus is talking about. But we do find evidence of what fruit is based in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Because the fruit of God is, that's produced inside of us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. These are things that are a direct reflection of who Jesus is. So if we are in Jesus connected to the vine and the vine is connected to us, the branches, we're going to produce a lot of good fruit. You see, I do believe that the world that we live in right now sees a lot of judgment and judgmental attitudes by Christians in which we use the word of God to beat people down. And that is not the way God intended for the Bible to be used. He intended it for us to demonstrate God's love and his grace and his mercy to others so that they would be drawn to him. The Holy Spirit is who convicts us of our sin. And I'm not going to sit here and waste time defining what sin is. The Bible is very clear. Anything that is contrary to the word of God, contrary to God's plan for our life, is sin. And so we have to be aware of what that is. And the only way we'll truly understand it is if we're connected to the vine, the vine that brings living waters. And the living water is found through the word of God. Not a pastor's opinion, not public opinion, not a good meme on social media, but truly the truth comes from the word of God. So it's important for us to recognize as Christians that to become attached or connected and to stay connected isn't based on what other people tell us, even our pastors in church. Folks that, that listen to me, I always tell you, don't listen to me. I give you guidance, but the truth comes from the word of God. So if you have a Bible, you need to be opening it. You need to be reading it. You need to be praying and asking God, what does it mean and how does it apply to my life? 
But then as you're connected to the vine, as these kids are going to do tonight, you're going to begin to hear the word of God speak into your life where there are areas in which you need to repent. Areas in your life that maybe you need to ch change the way you think and act, as Jesus did or has said when he began his ministry uh, coming out of the desert. Folks, Christianity is more than just a bunch of opinions or what churches or denominations preach. It's about a relationship with Jesus. And I believe the word we need to focus on is being intentional. We need to be intentional in our time when we read our word to take time to think about it. How does it apply to me? What is God speaking to me so that I can be more of a reflection to him and then into the community where there are many lost loved ones, friends, and co-workers that, quite frankly, I don't want to see go to hell. And I believe if we're being brutally honest with ourselves, we don't want to see our family and friends and people we care about or really anybody go to hell. So it's time to take this kind of matter seriously. Now, Jesus says, continue, he says, but you produce, you cannot produce anything without me. He's being very clear. Without Jesus truly operating in our life, we can't produce anything. And I think that's what's problematic in the world today. We as Christians still keep one foot in the world. We speak as the world. We behave as the world. We do things that really don't differentiate us any different than the world. And thus, we don't really look like Jesus. And when we get there, it's a place where we no longer can produce fruit, such as winning the loss to God, such as being more generous in our giving, such as being an example or a mentor to people that truly want to understand who God is, how much he loves us, how he sees us, and how he wants to make an impact and a difference in our life. Verse 6 says this, Whoever doesn't live in me is thrown away like a branch and dries up. Branches that like this are gathered and thrown into a fire and burned. Now, you can interpret this a lot of different ways, and I'm not trying to be overly religious, but there's two things here. Either we're not useful in God's kingdom if we call ourselves Christians, but we're not connected to the vine, or it could be a direct reference to the fact that many of us could be deceived ourselves and be lost. And if we're lost and we go into eternity without the gospel, the, the true Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that means we could spend eternity in hell. And that should obviously scare us. It should concern us to find out the truth. And where is the truth? It's in God's word. Verse 7 says this, If you live in me and what I say lives in you, then ask for anything you want and it will be yours. Now, the reason I love this particular verse, verse 7 in chapter 15 of John, is this. It says, if you live in me and my word lives in you. We have to understand that it's not just as simple as us saying, I'm a Christian, and that clears the way for us. Look, I, it took many years for me to become a pastor, and I am very humble when I say this. A lot of my friends that I grew up with may not recognize me for who I am today because I'm not the same man as I was when I was in my teens or in my 20s, in my 30s. God has done a work in my life. Was I a drug addict? No. Was I a drinker? No. I think some people would even say I've always been a good person and I would appreciate that. But my heart was very dark. It was very ugly. I didn't always treat people the same. I didn't always operate in grace and mercy. And it took me years to understand that. But man, when I got revelation of what God's grace and mercy had done for me and that he wanted me to demonstrate that to others, that changed everything from my work ethic to my ministry to how I trained and mentored other people. And it has been life-changing. And I'm not bragging on myself, but I say this, it has produced a lot of good fruit. And some of that fruit has gone out and produced fruit of its own. And I, I want to just be proud of the fact that I made a small impact on God's kingdom. But the only way that ever happened wasn't because I woke up one day and said, I'm going to be a different person. Kudos to those of us who do that when we do exercise and things like that, because sometimes you just got to take charge of your life and own it. But for me, I owned it when I opened up my Bible and I started letting scripture speak to me. I let God's word speak to me. And as it did, folks, the only thing I can tell you is that there were revelation in places of my life that I had no clue that I was falling short to God's plan. And so I made choices to begin to follow Jesus. 
Now, am I perfect today? Absolutely not. I still have areas of my life that I'm working on. And I'm excited about it because I want to be more and more a reflection of Jesus. And the only way to do that is to be connected to him, as the example says, me being the branch, him being the vine. So the only way the word becomes alive in us, because the God's word is, is alive and it's active in us when we allow it, I have to be intentional about opening my Bible. I have to be intentional about quieting my social media, quieting my phone, shutting the door, removing all distractions, <clears throat> and then just spending time with God. For many of us, this is a foreign concept because we are so busy that we don't think we have time to do anything like that. This is where the word intentional comes into play. We have to be intentional. We have to block out time. We have to be proactive. When we're proactive and we get into God's word, we can handle most of what life throws at us. When we're not connected to the vine and life throws curveballs at us, quite frankly, we become reactive. And I think we all know that when we are reactive, we're not at our best. Just something to think about. Verse 8 says this. It says, you give glory to my father when you produce a lot of fruit and therefore show that you are my disciples. I wonder often, even about myself, am I living a life, am I speaking, am I acting, am I behaving in such a way that brings glory to God? Take a moment and think about that for yourself. Just because we call ourselves a Christian or a follower of Jesus doesn't mean that we are a Christian and it doesn't mean that we're a follower of Jesus. We have to grow into it. We have to be connected to the vine. And when we become connected to the vine, we want God's word coursing through us. We want to produce good fruit. We want to be that reflection of him. But this last part of this verse is what spoke most to me. And therefore, show others that you are his disciples. Are you truly a disciple of Jesus Christ? If not, it simply comes down to this. You have to be intentional about connecting yourself to the vine. Connect yourself through his word. Spend time today finding something on the radio or a CD that's worship music, and just allow the worship music to speak to you. Be intentional about your time to get quiet in a prayer closet and just talk to God like he's your best friend. I've been a pastor now. I'll be 51 this coming Saturday, and all I'm going to simply say is this. I have learned that the only way to pray to God is like he's my best friend sitting in the room. I know that he listens and that he cares. Speak to him and talk to him. But then quiet your mind, quiet your spirit, and let God speak back to you. You can do it, and you can train yourself to hear what God honestly has to say. Finally, I'm going to go to verse 9. It says, I have loved you the same way the Father has loved me. So I live in love. If you obey my commandments, you will live in my love. Folks, the only way we truly understand God's commandments, and it's not just the Ten Commandments, it's how God has taught us to live. It's his expectation of us and our relationships with one another. It's on how we handle our marriages. It's how we handle the way we treat people in a fast food line. It's the way we treat our teachers when we're students and we disrespect them in class or choose not to do our homework because we don't care. It hurts others. I want to be a reflection of Jesus in everything I do. I wished I had been like that when I was younger because I do lament the times that maybe I set an example where somebody maybe looked at me and said, if that's what an example of a Christian is, I don't want to be it. And I will have to answer for it. I do repent and I ask God and I'm sure that he has helped me and he, I'm sure he has forgiven me. But I had an opportunity that I missed. How about you? Is your opportunity to be connected to the vine and to make a difference because you're a true disciple of Christ there? If not, it's not too late. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you can choose to be intentional and say, I'm going to open up my Bible. I'm going to read it. and I'm going to let the word become alive and active in me. And I hope you do that. Pastor Chris, I don't know where to start. I'll give you one great place to start. And that's reading the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are found at the beginning of the New Testament. And they chronicle the life of Jesus, the miracles that he worked, and his expectations of us as his followers. Read it and then read it again. After that, keep reading the New Testament. Read Psalm 100, especially. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. That maybe changes your heart because many of us are very selfish at times. 
maybe it's time to humble ourselves and just be thankful. So with that said, I'm concluding tonight's message. I pray that the service is going well with our children tonight and our leaders. I just believe, and we've been praying all week, that God is just moving on their behalf, speaking to them, Lord, and it opens their ears. I'm going to be praying the same over you. I don't know who's listening right now, but here's what I do know. God loves you. He cares about you. He sent his son to die for you on the cross. All he wants is a relationship with you. But he's a gentleman. He won't force himself. All you need to do is simply say, Jesus, I want to make you the Lord of my life. And if that is something you would like to do, I'm just going to pray a quick prayer. And if you would, just pray along with me. And trust me, even though it's on a video and nobody is around, God hears you. And he will make you one of his disciples. And you will be what we call in the faith, saved. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I recognize in this moment that I'm a sinner. Lord, but I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me and to pay the price for my sins. Heavenly Father, I accept this gift, and I ask right now to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I know that I'm not going to be perfect from this moment, but I pray, Heavenly Father, that you minister to my heart and to my mind. Help me to understand so that I can be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So with that said, I hope you guys have a blessed evening. I look forward to talking to you in video over the month of July as our kids will be taking a break. We'll be doing some team building activities with them. I will be doing a video on Wednesday nights for you, and then we will return uh, the first Wednesday night in August live again. We love you guys, and we appreciate your time being with us. Take care and have a blessed night.